This is Face the State with Rob Hanrahan. And featuring political insiders, Tony May and Charlie Giroux. Good morning and welcome to Face the State. I'm Rob Hanrahan. In this week's edition, our special guest is the First Lady of Pennsylvania, Susan Corbett. Since inauguration, there hasn't been a moment to spare in the lives of our governor and the First Lady. Mrs. Corbett is involved in a number of important charities, but always puts people first, making her a dynamic part of Pennsylvania's future. Pennsylvania native Susan Corbett is the 44th First Lady of the Keystone State. Standing by the governor's side as he was sworn in, neither could have predicted the tumultuous first months of his tenure. Wild weather hit Pennsylvania, including a hurricane and tropical storm, an earthquake, and the great flood of 2011. When the capital city and the rest of the Susquehanna Valley were facing dangerous rising waters, Mrs. Corbett had only been in the governor's residence for days before having to move out. She stood by the victims who were displaced, distraught, and distressed. We were very fortunate that we have a lot of help. The First Lady is a major supporter of breast cancer awareness, her mother having survived two bouts with the disease. But through all the difficult times the state has faced, she always takes time for people, creating a festive atmosphere at her new home and hosting kids during Halloween. And a top priority for the Corbett family was having a dog again. They lost their beloved Airedale Terrier in late 2009. Mrs. Corbett persuaded the governor to wait until after the election before they adopted two Airedales, aptly named Harry and Penny, in a Name the Pups contest among Pennsylvania children. And we are honored to have with us the First Lady of the Commonwealth, Susan Corbett. Thanks so much for being with us on Face the State here Thank at CBS for, 21. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, I, we're not going to talk much politics, but I can't ignore the 500-pound gorilla in the room, and that's what's going on at Penn State. Mm -hmm. But the last two weeks have been so busy with, uh, with Computergate, uh, the, the guilty verdicts in that. Uh, a lot of things going on with the governor right now. How's the conversation around the dinner table at night? Um, well, we haven't had too many dinners together lately because, as you said, uh, you know, it, it, it is a very busy week. But um, we were at Penn State together this past weekend, uh, both for the board meeting and for um, the, uh, the game. And um, so it's a difficult time for Pennsylvania, yes. but I think that um, the trustees uh, are um, facing the, the issue squarely and the new president of Penn State is getting hold of things. Um, I have to say that the thing that we were most excited to see was how the students stepped up. You know, During after the that, game. well, and even the night before the game, um, after that first incident when a handful of students got out of hand and, and caused some destruction, um, it was not a riot uh, as you know it was portrayed in the media but rather you know 2,000 students with a small number that uh, um, got a little too aggressive but uh, the next night there were 10,000 students and community members that turned up for a prayer vigil for um, uh, you know awareness of right. child sexual right. abuse which I thought was you know incredible and um, was really pleased to see how the players responded during the game and how the audience responded to the game. I thought um, everyone is determined to get to the truth of this and uh, to try to prevent it from ever happening again. How do you feel about the personal backlash, though, nationwide, that's happened? A personal against? The backlash. Uh, um, how do you personally feel yeah. about it as far as against really, Penn State? Yeah, I think that um, I wish that people would settle down a bit and allow the legal process to play out. Uh, it's still an ongoing investigation. There is a lot that, um, obviously, other than the summary of what the grand jury found, there's a lot of information that's not out there in the public, and it's still ongoing, so um, probably more things will come out later. So I wish people would just wait and allow the investigative process to uh, move forward and um, before they jump to conclusions that may not be accurate at all. Yeah, that's the dangerous part about this is jumping to conclusions. Right. We wanted to talk to you a lot about the inside the governor's residence, you know, mm -hmm. the inside story. So, sure. uh, so many things have happened, as we mentioned off the top, the, the, the great flood right after you moved into the governor's residence. Uh, we've had um, hurricanes, earthquakes, all sorts of things going on since inauguration, uh, right. the budget passing, all these things. 
Uh, what has it been like for you? Is it what you expected being first lady, or is it just <laughs> totally unexpected? <laughs> well, um, it's been it's been an interesting uh, nine months, uh, eleven months actually, almost. Um, I I think that. Um, this is a good time for Tom Corbett to be governor because I think he is at his best in a crisis and he's had more natural disasters sure in his first eight months than um, most governors have in their in their entire t um, term but um, Tom is uh, a very calm very focused and um, and so I'm really proud of the job that he's doing it's not easy um, it sure would be nice to be first lady when the economy was strong, right. and, uh, but uh, this is when he was elected, and, and I think that uh, you know, together we're, we're going to get through these difficulties, and I think at the end of his term, um, Pennsylvania will be a better state because of his governorship. I read an account, tell me if it's true, that you weren't exactly pleased when he decided to run for his first public <laughs> office. What happened with that? Well, I wasn't exactly pleased because I found out from my dentist that he was running. And I thought um, that I should probably have been consulted before he made that decision. So, of course, when, I, when he came home from work that evening and I uh, sort of confronted him at the door about why didn't you tell yeah. me and, and he, uh, you know, responded by getting out his petition that he had been circulating and ripped it up into little shreds and uh, but then we sat down and, and we talked about why he wanted to run for public office and at the time we had young children and he had a busy mm -hmm. career um, I wasn't quite sure why he would want to do um, it was actually township commissioner which mm -hmm. is a volunteer um, position but uh, we ended up sitting on the floor with scotch tape and um, a glass of wine, and we taped his petition together. And um, he talked because to me. Because of what he said. Right? right. He talked to me about why he wanted to be in public service. And I understood how important it was to him that he wanted to make a difference. And, uh, but also, as someone who lives in the state, um, I decided that he was the kind of person that should be in public office. And so, so right then and off there, we went. <laughs> and, and what a long, uh, adventurous road it has been. Yeah. Uh, you've often said that the governor is the, the type of man who likes to get everybody's opinion. He has an open ear before he makes a decision, uh, and he carefully thinks things out. Mm -hmm. uh, how often do you get his ear on certain things? And, and does he sometimes come to you and say, what do you think about this issue? Yeah, he does. Uh, he, he asks me my opinion. And um, he listens to me just as he would listen to anyone else. Um, I learned a long time ago not to tell him what he should do, but I um, express my own opinion or I ask him questions about his decision-making process mm -hmm. and how he came to certain conclusions. So um, we, we talk a lot, mostly now over breakfast in between letting the dogs out and racing out the door in the morning. So that's like the most time right now that you're getting right. to spend together. Take me back right before the budget, the proposed budget came out. Must have been some tough times there for the governor. It was one of the first things that, uh, that he had to take care of. Mm -hmm. The proposal that he put out on the table was not popular. Mm -hmm. um, what were things like at that point in the residence? Well, um, again, you know, he's very focused. Um, Does he keep work at work, and, and is he able to spend time with you and and leave that aside? Or well, I think at, at that point, you know, you you come into office, you don't have your team in place, you don't know what's happened before you in the different agencies, and you have six weeks to come up with a budget. And in this case, with the budget that you know you've lost federal funds, and you've got to find 4.2 billion dollars, so there's no easy answer. Um, there's no, there's no satisfying everyone. I mean, it's just a horrible um, situation to be in. But at the same time, if you don't have the money, you can't spend it. And uh, Tom is determined to um, you know, to not raise taxes because he believes that first he wants to find waste and fraud in government, and then you know that takes time. Um, they're finding that now, I think, and. Um, you know, they're creating a more efficient government, um, but also making decisions that will help the private sector to uh, um, thrive. And, um, but as far as uh, how, what he was like, I mean, he, he worked pretty much around the clock. 
to try to come up with the best solution um, for a really difficult problem. And he got it passed on time, and as he said on our program a while back, he was certainly pleased with that. Yeah. i got to take a quick break. The First Lady of the Commonwealth, Susan Corbett, with us right now. Our own CBS 21 political insiders join the conversation next. You're watching Face the State right here on CBS 21. You're watching CBS 21's Face the State with Rob Hanrahan and featuring political insiders Tony May and Charlie Giroux. Welcome back to Face the State here on CBS 21. We're, of course, talking with the First Lady of the Commonwealth, Susan Corbett. Thanks again for being with us. Our CBS 21 political insiders, Democratic strategist Tony May mm -hmm. and Republican strategist Charlie Giroux, join us. And, you know, we uh, showed and talked about off the top all the fun you had at the governor's residence in Halloween. Uh, and we're now approaching the holiday season, which uh, in our economy is getting tougher and tougher for a lot of people, Tony. Yeah, I was really delighted to hear that you opened up the, 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 the mansion bringing people from the neighborhood in. Uh, holiday season is very important, and uh, governors in the past have tried to set the tone. Do you have anything planned for Thanksgiving or Christmas? Well, we do. Um, on Thanksgiving Day, Tom's family is coming from um, Pittsburgh, and so we're going to have about 30 people for Thanksgiving dinner at the residence. Um, the staff will not be there. Um, the first lady will be cooking, and, uh, wow. <laughs> How's she and the governor will be the sous chef. <laughs> nice. <laughs> well, I think the, the staff might be a little nervous about me getting into the uh, catering kitchen, but other than that, uh, um, I think it'll be a lot of fun. Uh, Tom's uh, grandniece, actually, before he was elected, said that if uh, he got to be governor, um, everybody wanted to come for uh, Thanksgiving dinner at the residence. Uh, the night before, we're going to be at a food bank and uh, working at a food bank and serving a Thanksgiving dinner. And I'd also implore your, um, your listeners, uh, we just got uh, a mailing the other day from uh, a request from a food bank. So I think writing a check uh, for um, people who are in need, who aren't as fortunate as most of us are, uh, is a good way to celebrate Thanksgiving. Mrs. Corbett, a lot of the viewers may not know that even before you and the governor moved into public housing down there at uh, Front and McClay, <laughs> you had become real citizens of the city of Harrisburg. Right. You go to church here, frequent restaurants here, and everything else, and I know that you sometimes lead stressful lives. A lot of couples have date nights. Do the Corbett's have a date night? And if so, what does uh, Tom and Sue date night in Harrisburg look like? Well, we don't have a regular date night, but um, usually when we do go out, we, we just go out to dinner, just the two of us. Um, just getting out of our normal home and um, away for a little bit and, and having an hour or two to relax and catch up. Um, that's usually how we spend our time. Are you still out. doing that thing with the friends where uh, they come and you have dinner in and then dinner out the next yeah, day? You're still trying you know, to keep as, that up with? As a matter of fact, we have uh, a group of friends that um, for 30 years we've uh, been friends, uh, three other couples. Uh, one month we go out to eat, one month we come, or one month we cook in, mm -hmm. and um, as it happens, that group is coming this weekend. So, to the residents from Pittsburgh and wow. staying with us. So we're calling this one "Dinner Way In" and "Dinner Way Out." <laughs> <laughs> one of the things you know, people watchers or political watchers like Charlie and I watch uh, political officials, and you watch their hair turn gray. As, as the stress of office uh, <laughs> takes hold. We got that taken we got to take yeah. so, we, so we can't tell. Uh, how is Tom Corbett uh, handling this? Is this? Is this become extremely stressful or is he already ready for it? Well, it has to be stressful, but Tom doesn't show the stress. Um, what I've been trying to do is I hired a personal trainer and uh, who comes to the residence. There's a workout room in the basement. And so I'm encouraging him to take the dogs for walks, to go down on the treadmill, to work out with the trainer. I join them, and uh, I think that's a good way to handle stress. Well, you're looking younger as the administration Thank goes you very on. Much. <laughs> that's the one patronizing <laughs> moment for the day. But it's very clear, Mrs. Corbett, that you and the governor are best friends in addition to everything yeah. else. Can you tell our viewers something about Tom Corbett that they don't know that you think they should? Um, well, I haven't talked to Tom about about <laughs> saying this, but I think probably we can do it um, <laughs> safely. And, and Rob, you'll have a scoop. Okay. Um, the governor and I uh, are becoming grandparents. I, I'm, I'm so glad you could say that because yeah. a couple weeks ago the governor was here. Yeah. I wanted to ask him about that and for obvious reasons couldn't. I'm right. an adopted child, so please mm -hmm. tell us the story about the adoption. So, it's just beautiful. Yeah, our sister, or our sister, our daughter and son-in-law are adopting a little boy. 
Congratulations. And uh, they're in the adoption process now. They've had the baby for about a month. Uh, he's absolutely adorable. And um, of course, you know, the process takes a few months, so we're kind of low-keying the, uh, the details until we're comfortable that the, that the uh, process has run its course and everything's finalized. But uh, we feel well, very, have, very school, lucky. Folks, there's right. a great school, this is right. <laughs> November is National Adoption Awareness Month. Oh, is it really? And, yes, it is. Ah. And so it's really especially wonderful that you can tell us that today. And as an adopted kid, Kudos to your children. Yeah, well, and congratulations thanks. to your Well, family. we're all very excited. And, uh, you know, a new little life running around the uh, governor's residence is going to be a lot of fun. The uh, Circling back to something very serious, the Penn State situation, you've made breast cancer awareness a, a focus of your role as First Lady. Have you given thought to what you can do about the issue of child abuse awareness? Are you going to be doing some things in that way? Well, I am going to be working um, a bit with the uh, agencies that address child abuse, but um, I'm looking at a larger issue of the dropout rate in Pennsylvania. Um, it's a complicated issue, 40%, um, I think, is or 30% rather statewide uh, students do not finish high school on time. This is some of the urban areas are worse. And it's a complicated issue. Um, kids don't make it out of school for different reasons. And child abuse, mm -hmm. kids that are abused are one of the vulnerable groups mm. that, um, that often leads mm -hmm. to being disengaged at school and eventually dropping out. So I'm hoping to work with um, a number of organizations that um, are addressing dropout issues because of different reasons. And Mm -hmm. child abuse is yes. one. You mentioned earlier that the people of Pennsylvania should be, and I think they are very grateful that they have Tom Corbett as governor in a crisis because he's so calm and reassuring and assured. What's mm -hmm. something that upsets him? I, I know one thing. Uh. It's kids jumping off bridges during yeah. the lunch. <laughs> I think we all know that. We talked to him about that on this program. Yes, yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, public safety, safety is certainly um, a key issue for him, and so, um, you know that that's yep. upsetting Struck a when chord. right right and and the whole um, issue at Penn State I mean he he um, as you know he has a national reputation uh, in the attorney as Attorney General for establishing uh, internet predator unit and um, so child sexual abuse is is uh, an issue that um, I think you could tell in the way he responded um, he feels very strongly about um, about that issue. We have been honored to have the First Lady of the Commonwealth on, Susan Corbett. Thanks so much for joining us here on Face the State. Thank we you for having me. enjoyed the conversation. Me. Our Keystone commentary coming up next. We'll be right back. You're watching CBS 21's Face the State with Rob Hanrahan and featuring political insiders Tony May and Charlie Giroux. Gentlemen, I found that conversation with uh, Mrs. Corbett fascinating. I mean, some, so we usually have uh, just, we talk straight politics here, but it was very interesting to get the inside story, uh, find out about the adoption coming up, and, uh, and things that go on every day inside the residence. Yeah, I guess she's, she's breakfast is the most important She's obviously a true partner. You yeah. know, a lot of first ladies yeah, don't quite take the role that she does. She's very committed to disadvantaged children. We didn't get a chance to talk about that on the air, and the arts, mm -hmm. and uh, with this weekend being the anniversary of the Gettysburg Address. It's worth noting that she also was very, very involved in the Gettysburg Battlefield Foundation, so oh, she's got a was. rich history. Any surprises, Tony? No, as a matter of fact, not. I mean, the, the one thing that, uh, if you can make a generalization, men who are successful in politics normally have, normally have delightful wives. Uh, and when you shouldn't be surprised when you meet them that they, are, they have patience and in, insight uh, and tolerance, mm -hmm. all of those kind of factors that make it easier to live with a, a guy who needs to be in the, uh, the spotlight most of the time. I think that first uh, few months in office with the, the, the pressure of the budget on the governor and everything, we didn't see very much of him. We were wondering what's going on. And then suddenly uh, the total turnaround, and it was great to see the Halloween situation. I was so surprised to see them in costume. I mean, it was such a different Governor Corbett than we see. And then well, we, we I think any time people get to see the real people, they like yeah. it. And the Corbett's obviously are very engaging and wonderful people. And the more the folks of Pennsylvania see them, the more they're going to like him. And his approval ratings are on the rise as a result. And at the time when the state takeover of Harrisburg is imminent, it's really important that 
Harrisburg's first family, show the family side to make people more comfortable with, with what's going to be happening here. And a great thing that they've moved here, they live here. And they are real are citizens residents. here. They are. We'll be right back with your final thought in just a moment. You're watching Face the State here on CBS 21. You're watching CBS 21's Face the State with Rob Hanrahan and featuring political insiders Tony May and Charlie Giroux. Gentlemen, I found that conversation with uh, Mrs. Corbett fascinating. I mean, some, so we usually have uh, just, we talk straight politics here, but it was very interesting to get the inside story, uh, find out about the adoption coming up and, uh, and things that go on every day inside the residence. Yeah, I guess she's, she's breakfast obvious, is the most important She's obviously a true partner. You yeah. know, a lot of first ladies yeah, don't quite take the role that she does. She's very committed to disadvantaged children. We didn't get a chance to talk about that on the air and the arts. Mm -hmm. And uh, with this weekend being the anniversary of the Gettysburg Address. It's worth noting that she also was very, very involved in the Gettysburg Battlefield Foundation. So oh, she she's certainly was. Rich history. Any surprises, Tony? No, I, as a matter of fact, not. I mean, the, the one thing that, uh, if you can make a generalization, men who are successful in politics normally have, normally have delightful wives. Uh, and when you, you shouldn't be surprised when you meet them that they, are, they have patience and in, insight uh, and tolerance, mm -hmm. all of those kind of factors that make it easier to live with a, a guy who needs to be in the, uh, the spotlight most of the time. I think that first uh, few months in office with the, the, the pressure of the budget on the governor and everything, we didn't see very much of him. We were wondering what's going on. And then suddenly uh, the total turnaround, and it was great to see the Halloween situation. I was so surprised to see them in costume. I mean, that was such a different Governor Corbett than we see. And then well, we, we I think any time people get to see the real people, they like yeah. it. And the Corbett's obviously are very engaging and wonderful people. And the more the folks of Pennsylvania see them, the more they're going to like him. And his approval ratings are on the rise as a result. And at the time when the state takeover of Harrisburg is imminent, it's really important that Harrisburg's first family show the family side to make people more comfortable with, with what's going to be happening here. And a great thing that they've moved here, they live here. And they are real are citizens here. They are. We'll be right back with your final thought in just a moment. You're watching Face the State here on CBS 21.